Welcome back to my Transformers Animated Episode Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at the two-parter, Human Error. In these two episodes, Soundwave returns. Yes, Soundwave. Remember him? He was in that one episode of Season 1, and then we never saw him again. Well, he's back. And this time, he has entranced the Autobots and plugged them into the Matrix. I mean, the Loop. I mean, wait, did they even give a name to this virtual world that they're in? Oh well. So Soundwave traps the Autobots in a virtual world where we get to see them as humans! So cute! As he tries to reprogram them into Decepticons in the real world. Not as cute. Meanwhile, Sari must put together a team of replacement Autobots in order to save her friends. Hmm, kind of cute. This first episode begins with Optimus Prime patrolling Detroit, as the other Autobots get ready for a Christmas celebration back at base. Hmm, maybe I should have saved this two-parter for December. I mean, it's not even October yet. Oh well. Hopefully you all return and watch this again closer to Christmas time. So we see that Powell has stolen some Dax Soundwave design and is marketing it as the hot new toy for this holiday season. It's like their version of the Cabbage Patch Kids, or Furbies, or Tickle Me Elmo, or for more recent examples, Hatchimals or Baby Yoda. Or, you know, basically whatever the latest video game console is. Now I'm sharing Soundwave with the entire world for only $19.99 each. $19.99? How does he do it? They eventually convince Optimus to come home and enjoy a warm cup of oil nog. Tell him we're making oil nog. Oil nog? Oh, I'm afraid to ask. Yeah, it doesn't sound that appetizing to me either. As a robot or a human. I like how the background music is a cute version of comfort and joy. And that they have the fireplace channel on TV. Aww, it feels so Christmassy. And Sari looks so cute in her little Santa hat. Aww, I love it. This is the kind of Christmas that I wish I had. But it turns out that one of their presents is a Soundwave doll, which spikes their oil nog. No way this Santa Claus could deliver billions of presents in one night. I can think of at least one way. Ho, ho, ho. Aw, so cute. And then Sari tosses her Santa hat on Optimus's head crest thingy. A, so cute. And B, great throw, Sari. Also, my girl Sari is pretty strong. Look at her lift those Autobot-sized mugs. Where is she hiding those muscles? So the Autobots all get tipsy from their oil nog and go to bed. Oh, and, uh, yeah, very, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, big guy. And pleasant dreams. But when they wake up, they're in for a surprise. Yes, it seems that the Autobots have been turned into humans. Kind of like Rodimus, RC, Springer, and Ultra Magnus in the G1 episode, Only Human. Aw oh man, I wish we had more Transformers episodes where they get turned into humans. I think we have one like that coming up in Rescue Bots. I cannot wait to see and review that. But yes, we see all the humans in their adorable human personas. Hmm, I wonder if Transformers make human OCs like how humans make Transformers OCs. Well, I guess that's what hollow avatars and pretenders and stuff like that are. But just imagine, Transformers writing human fanfiction. Hmm, better not dwell on that too much. Auto... Uh, man. Transform... Er, uh, roll... Uh, uh, let's... let's just go. Meanwhile, Sari is enjoying Christmas Day with her father. A sound wave toy? To replace the one that tried to take over the world. Hmm. I think this is a case of a parent buying a toy for their kid when it is actually something that they want to play with instead. But Sumdak has one more present for his daughter. A scooter. But this scooter is more than meets the eye. 
because it also transforms into a jetpack. This scooter jetpack is actually an evolution of an earlier idea. In some early promo footage, we see a scene very similar to the one in the show's intro. But in this one, we see Sari, who has a tricycle, which she uses her key on, and it turns into a little jetpack for her. I think this is really cool that they brought this idea forward and into the show proper. Although now I want figures of both younger Sari and older Sari with their respective transforming jetpacks. It's so cute! Hello? Guys? Cute girl with jetpack is here! The Autobots get hungry and decide to get something to eat. Now that they can actually eat. When we see inside the Burger Bot, there are a number of cameos and references. First of all are the three patrons sitting in the booth. On the left is Hydra, the Decepticon Godmaster from Master Force. But this is actually a double homage, as Hydra is also a reference to Andrew Hall, whose screen name was Hydra. He's a longtime Transformers fan, and actually used to work for eHobby in Japan, helping them do translation work. Beside him is Marty Eisenberg, the story editor and writer of Transformers Animated, as well as Beast Machines. He's also written some Transformers Prime and Rescue Bots episodes too. And finally, there's Cancer, another character from Master Force. I don't know why he's included here, other than that maybe somebody working on the show really likes that character. Hopefully the Autobots don't try to kidnap him like they did in Master Force. Of course, Prowl chooses the vegan option because he's into nature and stuff. That's a cute attention to detail. Don't you know where that animal flesh comes from? <clears throat> no, but I know where it's going. Oh. I think I got some kind of a function here. Yeah, apparently it's going right in the toilet, as Bulkhead has to participate in another aspect of the human experience. We then see Prowl playing peekaboo with Nancy Whitwiggy, Spike and Carly's adorable little daughter, who we previously saw Carly pregnant with in the episode Garbage In, Garbage Out. Aww, I don't care if she does have solid blue eyes, she's still cute. Also, where is Daniel? But the fun times are over as the Decepticons attack. And when the team tries to rescue some other humans from a burning building, Prowl begins to demonstrate some superhuman abilities. Wow. He is the one. And after a failed attempt to stop the Decepticons, the Autobots, or Auto Men, take the bus to Sumdak Tower. You know, this isn't so bad. Usually we do the driving. But upon getting there, Apparently the show decides to recreate Dark of the Moon by having Cybertron in Earth's orbit, or the ultimate doom from G1. Take your pick. Cybertron then pulls an Independence Day on Sumdak Tower. The Autobots finally realize that this world is an illusion. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? And the Autobots begin to bend the rules of their reality to their own will. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. With Prowl really going all Neo. They vanquish the Decepticons and come to the conclusion that they're inside some kind of virtual reality. You know, like the loop. Back in the real world, Zari discovers the truth. That Soundwave has put the Autobots in VR while he tries to reprogram them into Decepticons. How do we get out of here? Yeah, and out of these little bone bags and back into our big bot bodies. Excuse me? What kind of bodies? Back into our big bot bodies. Oh, big bot bodies. I thought he said something else. So the Autobots managed to transform back into their original bodies, which is a little on the body horror side if you ask me. Not all of us. It might help you if you make the noise with your mouth like this. <laughs> Sounds silly, but okay. But the Autobots aren't done yet, 
because this is still only part one, as we see a giant sound wave emerge from the ground in his iPod white device label color scheme. Or, you know, I guess it could be considered his shattered glass color scheme too. Funny, when we saw the Autobots asleep earlier, in that lighting, Optimus Prime almost looked like he was in his shattered glass color scheme too. Soundwave fends off Sorry, and I like how he has Laserbeak and Ratbat. I like the idea of his minions being something other than just cassettes that hide in his cleavage. And we end this first episode with Soundwave beginning the final stage of the Autobots reprogramming into the Decepticons. In part two, Soundwave experiences some technical difficulties, and using his processor over matter ability, Prowl is temporarily able to escape. Huh, I just noticed that Soundwave's screen is shaped like his G1 alt mode. So, Soundwave uses his toys to hypnotize the citizens of Detroit into mindless zombies. In the VR world, the Autobots chase after Soundwave, or is it Sound Blaster, in their own vehicle modes. Hey, take it easy, Leadfoot! No, that's Bulkhead! Leadfoot is usually some kind of race car. The Autobots fall into Soundwave's trap and he successfully reprograms them into Decepticons. Sorry goes looking for help from the Dinobots, but Grimlock and Swoop refuse. Dinobots not pets! Who would want a Dinobot for a pet? Are you offering? So we see Scrapper, the best Constructicon, and his pet Dinobot Snarl. You named him Snarl? Yeah, you see, Hasbro can't call their Triceratops Dinobot slag anymore because apparently that's a bad word in some parts of the world. So the best idea they can think of at the time was to simply steal one of the other Dinobot's names. Of course, nowadays they call him Slug or Slog, which is a lot closer to the original slag. Well, I was going to call him Slag, but I think he took it as an insult. Basically what Scrapper said. So, Scrapper builds a raft for him and Snarl to get off Dinobot Island. Yeah, once we hit shore, me and the big fella might head up north. I hear there's good oil country up there. Scrapper wants to come to Canada? That's cool. But you better have your passport, buddy. So whether you like it or not, you're gonna be a hero. Did someone say hero? Be a hero! Yes, I love that Rekgar is back. He is too adorable. So the substitute Autobots transform and roll out. But they are confronted by Soundwave and his brainwashed Autobots. Scrapper, you and Snarl take Bulkhead and Ratchet. Repguard, you with me. Gosh, this is so sudden. Aren't we a little young to go steady? The replacement Autobots take on the real Autobots in a series of comical scenes. Also, I love how Sari leaves a snow angel behind in the snow. So cute. Also, funny that I was also talking about snow angels in this week's Beast Wars review. Trying to control all the Autobots at once proves to be too much for Soundwave, which seems very similar to a problem that Megatron had in Beast Machines. Hmm, I wonder where they got that idea. Catchy, easy to dance to, but you know what it needs. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. Nice reference to Rekgar's voice actor, Weird Al, who is also known for playing an accordion. Prowl is able to resist Soundwave's control and knocks Ratbat out of his hands, releasing Optimus Prime from his influence. Well, you did want to turn them into Decepticons. I think it's only fair that Prowl deceived you. Optimus grabs Laserbeak and forcibly transforms him into guitar mode. Aww, poor little bird bot. But I do like how Optimus and Soundwave briefly have a guitar battle. I just wish that it was longer, and that they actually played some self-referential music back and forth. I mean, how cool would it have been if Optimus suddenly started belting out the Beast Wars theme song as a reference to his voice actor David Kay? and then Soundwave could play a version of the G1 theme song in response. I would have loved to have seen them go back and forth for a little bit, 
paying homage to different Transformers series from the past. Also, even though it was ever so brief, this short guitar battle reminded me of another, much more epic one in another favorite series of mine, Reboot, where we see the hero of the show, Bob, rock out against the series baddie, Megabyte. Seriously, if you haven't watched Reboot yet, you should. It's awesome. Optimus and Soundwave's guitar battle also reminded me of the one in Scott Pilgrim, which is another favorite movie of mine. Well, it has its issues, but it's still pretty awesome. If you're a fan of video games and all that other cool geeky stuff, check it out. Plus, it was shot and set in Toronto. Yeah, set in Toronto, not just filmed there and pretending that it's New York or something. So that's pretty awesome. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh right, Transformers Animated. So Optimus smashes Soundwave over the head with Laser Beak, seemingly destroying Soundwave and his two little minions. Although we see in a moment that Soundwave has once again reverted back to his original G1 cassette deck mode. And he is carried off by Laser Beak. So apparently they're both okay. Maybe Ratbat is too? Of course, this being the final season, we never see them again. The humans are freed from Soundwave's control, and everyone has their happy ending. Are you snow? I should have got a kitty cat. Aw, so cute. I would have loved to see Scrapper have a little kitty cat. Who knows? Maybe we could have gotten Ravage in this episode too. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas! Garbage for all the good little children! Wait, weren't you just vacuuming up all the garbage a second ago? Oh well. This was a great two-parter. I loved it. Sari did a great job being the leader. I would have loved to see her do more of that in this series. And of course, it was very cute seeing the Autobots as humans. It really reminded me of the G1 episode, Only Human. Oh, which also reminds me. Here's that drawing of Human Sentinel from Hell that she promised in the last video. Aw, poor Sentinel. He's afraid of an itty bitty spider. But I guess they look much bigger now that he's a puny little human. It really is a shame that he and the elite guard took off before this two-parter. I would have loved to see Sentinel's reaction to being turned into an organic himself. Who knows, maybe if you guys follow her on her Twitter and like her art, Hell might draw some more human error inspired artwork. Also, I'm so glad that you all enjoyed our collab together last week. We really enjoyed reading all your kind comments on that video. Thank you all so much. And if you would like to see us do another video together, be sure to check out last week's video. If it gets to 10,000 views by this time next week, we will do another special video together. Wouldn't you guys like that? As for this review, what did you think of this episode of Transformers Animated? Let me know down in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you here next week for the next episode of Transformers Animated. Decepticon Air. So, see you here next week for that.